Hello, my name is Jack Gallagher, and my project is on the effects of toxic metals on plants. What is the problem being investigated? The problem being investigated is how toxic metals are entering into the soil and how they are harmful to the environment. They are harmful because they ruin crops by infecting them with their toxic material. They also affect humans because people can eat these crops and get very sick or even die. What is the hypothesis? There should be a natural way of taking out these harmful metals from the soil without any machines or chemicals, such as using plants. This is to prevent crops, humans, and the planet as a whole from being affected by these awful metals. Background info. How toxic materials in soil are harmful to the environment, crops, people, and animals. For example, China, India. Ever since the Industrial Revolution, countries like China or India or and India, have grown very dependent on factories to make money. Most of the time, these factories are handling very toxic material that is dangerous to all living things. These materials can cause some serious health repercussions for humans, like different forms of cancer and even death. Some of these uh, toxins include mercury or cyanide. These countries don't have many rules in place or precautions for getting these materials out of the soil. That's where it becomes dangerous. America also deals with similar problems as many things can contribute to toxic materials in the soil, such as mining, which causes toxic material to enter the soil over time, as well as pesticides, which are used to get harmful disease carrying bugs or animals from infecting crops, which actually contributes to putting toxic metals into the soil. Why is this research novel or significant? Our crops are being affected by toxic metals in the soil due to such things as car exhaust, mining, sewage sludge, and much more. In today's society, many crops are being affected by toxic metals in the soil. There are many ways they are being affected. One way is in car exhaust. Um, car exhaust holds many toxic metals and eventually can end up in the soil and accumulate. Another way to for another way that toxic materials um, get into soil is by mining. Mining causes toxic material from ores to end up in the ground, and eventually the toxic material makes its way through rivers, streams, and other bodies of water to eventually go onto farmland and soil. A study was conducted in 2012, and it said that for Japan, 7 million tons of sewage sludge was found in the soil. For China, 30 million tons of sewage sludge was found in the soil. And for the U.S., 6 million tons of sewage sludge was found in the soil. Sewage sludge contains many harmful toxins and heavy metals that can really be bad for the environment and people. And there is so much of it in the soil right now as well. A crop can take in toxic metal from the soil into its roots, thus making it toxic and very unhealthy to eat and even poisonous. Humans can eat these crops filled with all these awful things that should never be consumed by anyone. This research can this research was created to see if there could be a natural solution without using any types of machinery or chemicals. Not many people are really testing naturally for a solution with this problem. That's why my testing is more innovative, because, because I'm not using any chemical formula or machinery to get rid of toxic metals in the soil. Instead, my research is based off of completely using um, a natural solution by only using plants that can take in toxic metals. So these are my uh, materials that I used during this experiment. Arabidopsis, Thalena, Sea Pink Thrift, Ragweed, Plastic Pots, Masking Tape, Artificial Plant Light, Peat Moss, Time Release Fertilizer, Eyedropper, Ruler, Graduated Cylinder, Copper Sulfate, Nickel Sulfate, Digital Scale, Rolling Soil, pH Meter, Wax Paper, per Permanent Markers, Plastic Wrap, Plastic Container with Lid for Metals, Measuring Cups, Notebook, and Cheesecloth. What was done to prepare for this research? The first step needed in this research was to select and grow three separate types of plants, Arabidopsis, Sea Pink Thrift, and Ragweed. Germination period, meaning germination means the beginning stages of planting seeds. Each plant has different procedures for germination. For Sea Pink Thrift, the seeds were placed in the refrigerator for 10 days. Then they were soaked in warm water for eight hours. After that, they were placed in pots of fertilized soil, and finally, they were placed in darkness for approximately a week. For ragweed, uh, planted seeds in fertilized soil and began watering. There were no special germination steps to follow. And for Arabidopsis, 
The seeds were cold treated in the refrigerator for three days. Next, the seeds were planted in pots. Uh, then, um, plastic wrap was loosely placed over each pot so it could trap moisture. The pots were then placed on a tray and approximately a centimeter of water was placed on that tray. The holes in the pot would allow the soil to absorb the water. The pots were then placed in the refrigerator for two days for germination. What was done um, to test these plants? What was done to test the plants with the heavy metals? First, we had to put them in trays, and there is three groups, or there was two groups for each tray. First tray was the control tray, the second tray was the nickel tray, and the third tray was the copper tray. And for each tray, there were two groups of each plant. What was done to test the plants with the heavy metals? To test the metals in the different plants, initially two solutions were created, one with nickel sulfate, the other with copper sulfate. Each solution was made up of 1.6 grams of one type of metal, either nickel sulfate or copper sulfate, and combined with 100 milliliters of water. Then 25 milliliters of solution was placed into each of the designated pots that either contained copper sulfate or nickel sulfate. A liquid solution was evenly distributed amongst the pots. 25 milliliters of each solution will go into C pink thrift group 1 and 2, Ragley group 1 and 2, and Arabidopsis group 1 and 2. After only two doses of the metal solutions, all ragweed and arabidopsis reacted negatively at a faster pace than expected. As a result, a new solution was made to dilute the metals, further to minimize the impact of the metals. This solution includes 1.6 grams of one type of metal, either the nickel sulfate or the copper sulfate, but then was combined with the greater amount of water at 1,000 milliliters. This new solution was placed into group two of each plant. Each plant was placed under artificial sunlight lamps, and there were six of each plant. All plants were split up into two groups, group one and group two. There had to be two plants, each being affected by nothing or the control plant. Then there had to be two plants, each affected by nickel sulfate, and two plants affected by copper sulfate. And that is how the testing was set up. For C-Pink Thrift, the results were um, that in con the control plants of C-Pink Thrift grew very well. C-Pink Thrift was the best to reduce the toxic metals in the soil. But looking at the data on the graphs, the pH of the C-Pink Thrift did drop in Group 1 with copper by a lot on February 21st. But by March 1st, it made a very positive comeback. C-Pink Thrift was also the only plant out of the three that didn't die in either of the toxic metals in Group 1 or 2. It also grew to a max height of five inches. For ragweed, the control grew well. Ragweed was the plant that was in the middle. It didn't die as quickly as Arabidopsis, which will um, or take in as much toxic metals from the soil as Arabidopsis or seeping thrift. One plant in group two even grew to a maximum height of eight centimeters. After the toxic metals were introduced to the soil, it was mostly on par um, with taking in with taking in the nickel sulfate um, with the other plants, and it held up a really good fight. As for the copper sulfate, it didn't do so hot. In both groups one and two, it can be seen that the plant was definitely struggling. The pH dropped significantly for both groups one and two, and the copper sulfate on February fifteenth. And the pH level never rose that much since then. It couldn't really compete with the other plants. All in all, it did okay. It wasn't the worst or the best. For Arabidopsis, the control grew well. Looking at the charts, it could be seen that the pH level for the Arabidopsis plants had taken in the toxic metals better than any of the other plants. This is seen because on February 25th, the pH level for both metals was almost back to normal, with a reading of 7 pH for group 1 and 2, whereas for the rest of the plants, that wasn't the case. The problem with the Arabidopsis is, although it did so well at taking in the toxic metals, it also died quicker than all the other plants. It was doing its job very well, of removing the toxins, but it couldn't handle all the toxic metals at once. It was also very sm it was also a very small plant and only grew up to a max height of three centimeters. What is a claim for testing? From looking at the data, it is clear that sea pink thrift was the best plant for taking in the toxic metals, nickel and copper sulfate. 
It was the only plant to not die in group one or two, and it was the best at living and growing even with the toxic metals in its soil. What are the next steps? I want people to become more aware of the environment and how important it is to all living things. I want people to see that the environment is under attack and that toxic metals can pollute the soil and harm humans and crops. I want to see more people finding new solutions to solve this problem and put an end for good to this problem for good. I hope in the future to start really thinking about what I can do to test and make something to prevent toxins invading and poisoning plants. Yeah. Thank you for listening to my presentation.